Hi again, folks. I'd like to talk about coaching and, and the coaching process and what I call the coaching kata, which is a habit pattern or a set of habit patterns that result in effective coaching. And coaching is really helping another person. And as I said in a previous session, don't think of coaching as something remedial. Tom Brady has a coach. Peyton Manning has a coach. The best athletes in the world have coaches. Why? Because they're engaged in continuous improvement, and you should be too. It is becoming common today for executives to have a coach. And, and the coach simply helps them think, gives them feedback, is somebody who they can bounce ideas off without worrying about you know, the, the, what the, might be a crazy idea spreading in the organization, but somebody who can give them feedback and help them think things through. So coaching should become a normal process. If you're going to change the culture of an organization, coaching is absolutely essential. Why? Because the culture is habit patterns. If we're going to change habit patterns, just reading a book or watching these videos will not do it. You've got to behave, you've got to practice, then you've got to get feedback on that practice. And over time, you know, over a period of months and even years, to really establish new habit patterns in the organization. So, first of all, in the book, the Team Kata book, and attached to this lecture as a PDF file, there is a coaching exercise uh, that basically is, is a set of questions to help you think through a coaching experience. I'd like you to try that, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to have that in front of you as you go through this lecture and the, the next lecture. Now, as I've helped organizations change, and there was, just as an example, there was an oil company down in Houston, Texas, one of the big ones, um, where we were helping them create a team-based culture in the organization, quality improvement culture, sort of before the word lean was popular. Um, but at one point, I had four full-time consultants there and about 35 internal consultants. And just even a couple hours ago, I was on the phone with a coach, an internal coach, um, at a healthcare organization in Canada. And I'm coaching her while she's coaching the teams internally. So, you know, this model that you see it describes the natural work teams from senior management team down to the front line. And it des describes having an external coach can help coach the internal coaches and maybe the senior management team. I recommend that most of the coaching be done, and this is largely a cost factor, by internal coaches. And you, sh you should know that at Toyota, the, our sort of model of lean management, every manager has a coach. So it's a normal process in organizations today. Now, I want to help you think about how to do that well. And as you're going through a change process, motivation is important. And, and I found just visually displaying progress. And, and I'm also attaching the Excel spreadsheet that is this chart. And basically what this chart has is on, on the, across the bottom from left to right are the training modules, the sections of the course. And going up in black are the deliverables, the action steps you take. And the coach should coach not around going through the lectures, but around the doing. In other words, when you go through the lecture on process mapping, actually the set of lectures, the section on process mapping, the deliverables to map your processes and to find waste and eliminate waste from your processes. Well, the coach should coach around that. And there are coaching questions in the, the coaching map that I've given you. Um, but this basically certifies that, yes, you've done that. So as you move from bottom left to upper right on this graph, you are becoming a high-performance team. And if I were making a recommendation to a company, what I would say is set this up for every team and every manager and certify them as you can, you can call it a, a green belt or a yellow belt, if you will, or just certify them as high-performance teams as they get to the upper right side of the, the chart as they complete the, complete the course. And by completing the course, they are actually improving performance in the organization. Uh, they are eliminating waste. They are becoming more productive, uh, et cetera. So that's a, a suggestion. Now, there are two applications of the scientific method here. One application of the scientific method 
is the process of learning that the coaching kata is built around. The other application of the scientific method in this course is the process of improving the performance of the team. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we, we go up. But I, I wanted to share you know, one very quick example, and it's a good example of the scientific method, but it's also a good example of coaching. And let me just call it the story of Mary. Now, back in the old days, <laughs> I age myself, um, in the 1970s, um, I was working in textile mills in South Carolina and North Carolina and Georgia. And some of you who are old enough, uh, you might have seen the movie Norma Ray with Sally Fields. And it was about union organizing in a J.P. Stevens uh, plant in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Um, and it, it did a good job of describing what, what I'll call were normal conditions and normal, the normal culture of a textile mill uh, back in the old days. Uh, I worked in that plant. I worked in that Rocky Mount J.P. Stevens uh, plant. And it, it was pretty accurate <laughs> in describing the culture. Now, what we did back in those days was simple stuff. Um, we didn't know about Toyota production system and stuff. But what we knew about was behavioral psychology. And behavioral psychology says, tell people the facts. Give people feedback. We know about the feedback loop effect, right? where if people get feedback on their performance, they're, they're more likely to improve than if it's their performance is sort of invisible to them, right? Transparency in, improves performance. And we knew about positive reinforcement. Behavior is a function of its consequences. If good things happen after I perform well, your child brings home an A, you, you applaud, you take them out for a pizza or whatever, um, they're more likely to do that in the future. Behavior is more likely to, to increase in rate when it's reinforced. So those two simple principles are scientific principles, well-proven principles, and we were applying those principles. Now, here's the story of Mary. Mary was, uh, say, 45 years old, 50 years old. Um, she was a doffer, which is a job on the looms in the, the weave room. And um, Mary um, was slow. I don't know how else to put it. Mary was just slow. And she was operating at 35% standard operating efficiency. Now, how did they let that go? Well, they let it go because absenteeism was their big problem in the plants. And um, Mary was always there. You could count on Mary being there. <laughs> um, and, and once we improved absenteeism, improved attendance, um, suddenly they were saying, well, you know, that's 35%. We can't, we can't we can't pay for that anymore. And I was sitting in a meeting, and the supervisor said, you know, we're going to have to let Mary go. And I asked the question, um, does Mary know? And this is a basic justice issue, in my opinion. Um, somebody needs to know they're not performing well enough, or it is unjust to discipline them, particularly firing them, in any way. So you have to let Mary know, and you have to give her the opportunity to improve, or it's just not fair. And I said, you know, does, does she know exactly how, and you know what the supervisor said? He said, she's always performing. That's the way she is. You know, you're not going to change Mary. She's performed that way for, you know, the last 10 years. And I said, well, let, let's, just, let's just give something a try, okay? Let's make a graph with the baseline data. How Mary is, you know, let's take a couple weeks. Let's plot her performance for a couple weeks. Then let's take the graph to Mary and show it to her. And let's give Mary the opportunity. Ask Mary, Mary, what do you think you could do in the next week or two? Now, what do you think Mary's going to say? Is she going to say worse? Is she going to say the same? Or do you think she's going to say better? When you play golf and you put the ball down and you get ready to tee off, what do you say to yourself? You say better. I'm going to try to beat my average on this, on this course or, or whatever sport you play. If you run, you're going to try to, you know, Beat the, beat the time it takes you to go X number of miles um, or whatever. That's, that's human nature to try to do better. So the supervisor shows it to her. Mary says, I think I can do 40, 45%. We coach the supervisor to say whatever she said. Say, good, let's give it a try. I'll come back next week or in two weeks and let, let's, let's see how you did. Guess what? Mary's doing 45%. And the supervisor, we had to train them to do this. We had to practice this, believe it or not, because it wasn't their nature. We practiced saying, Mary, that's great. That's terrific. 
supervisor says that, and he says, now, Mary, what do you think you can do in the next? What do you think Mary's going to say? Mary's going to say up, right? We move an up. And Mary says 50% or 55% or something. To make a very long story short, within a couple months, Mary is operating at 120% standard operating efficiency. Who knew, right? Nobody ever asked her, <laughs> right? Nobody ever gave her the data. Nobody ever gave her the feedback. Nobody ever re rewarded her or positively reinforced her, praised her, whatever you want to call it. And now Mary is performing. Now, the coach, I'm going to call the supervisor for Mary in this case. She, he is the coach. Now, he may also help her by saying, Mary, let, let, let me watch what you're doing and let me see exactly if there's a way to improve. You know, if, I, if I watch the the doffer who operates at 100% standard operating efficiency, how does she or he behave? And how does Mary behave? And if I can say to Mary, Mary, you know, just look at that, watch that, um, that, that cuts down time or that speeds things up or, you know, you have to know the, the job. But, but that's coaching, right? So coaching can make a profound impact on performance, not only with doffers in a textile mill, but with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and with every manager in your organization. Now, I want to I wanna come back and go through the, a coaching example of, of a coaching kata, which is a very simple model, a set of habits that you can apply. Come right back to the next lecture. Thanks. Thanks.